<laughs> Hi, and welcome to Sunday with Mike. I'd like to start off by thanking John Young from the Disc Jockey News for filling in for me last week. It was a great show, and I hope that you learned as much as I did from it. On today's show, we're going to cover some of the requested topics from some of the members of the Sunday with Mike group on Facebook. Are you a member? If not, we're holding a seat for you, and the link is in the description below. So tell me, how do you get replies from your clients after sending them a quote? maintaining your equipment, standing up for your company, and finally we'll talk about some Master of Ceremony tips. Grab yourself a cup of coffee and join me. I'll be right back. So I've got my coffee. I hope you have yours. One of the members in the Sunday with Mike Facebook group asked, okay, so I've sent the client a quote and they don't reply. So what am I doing wrong? Well, the short answer is that it could be many different things. Maybe it was the way you worded something. Maybe your price threw them into shock. But let's look at the basics for a moment. If they asked you for a price and then you gave them one, from their perspective, what else is there to discuss, especially if they're not interested in hiring you? I've learned along the way that it's in my best interest to track things as much as possible. So let's take the no reply email and break this down a little bit. Did they reply to your emails before you gave them a price? If they did, then common sense would say that the only problem is you didn't fit into their budget. But what if you wrote something that they took offense to? Have you asked someone else to proofread your most popular replies and make sure that everything is okay and grammar and spelling are fine? What if they're not? That's how you fix this stuff. So you don't want to give the impression that you're not very well educated and, and sometimes having a fresh pair of eyes uh, works really well for making sure that your replies are going to hit the mark. So there's so many different reasons that a couple might not reply to your email that it's really hard to specify exactly what it might be. So be sure to proofread everything, keep your emails short, and then at the end of every single email you send to a potential client, make sure you end it with a question, unless you want to say goodbye to them. Do you follow up after a certain period of time? If not, you should. Even though I've never recovered a gig from the black hole, many times I do get a response that at least gives me a reason why I wasn't hired. 99% of the time, it was because my prices were too high and they found someone to do the same thing that I do for less. Now, we all know that that's not true, but at least they shared a real reason in their opinion that as a business owner, you can learn from. So what does that tell us? Well, we could either lower our price or we have to learn to sell our value better because they didn't see the value. That's why they went with the other person. They thought they could do the same job you could do for less money. If you attempt to tell your client something like, if the cheaper guy could deliver what I deliver, why wouldn't he charge the same thing that I am? But this is not the kind of stuff your clients want to hear. And in my experience, trying to educate them will only backfire on you. Trust me on this one and start focusing on your value and not somebody else. Here's my short guide. Don't include any prices in your first email, no matter what. Find something to ask them and send them an email. Make sure it's a legitimate question, but find something that you could legitimately need to know and ask that in your first reply. See how long it takes them to reply to your email. Now you have a basis to deal with and then always end those emails with a question. 
after you give them a price, if they completely disappear, follow up a couple of more times and then move on. Stop wasting time on, on dead issues. Follow up and move on. I'm going to be right back. DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. We were asked to discuss equipment maintenance, and this area is so diverse that it's going to be really hard to cover everyone, but I'm going to give it a try. Speaker cones in your speakers have a suspension ring around the circular diaphragm, that the cone, that allows the speaker cone to move in and out and produce sound. This ring is going to dry out if it's left in extreme cold or extreme heat. It becomes brittle and it'll actually rip itself apart while you're playing the speaker. Try to keep your speakers in moderate climates whenever possible to prolong their life. Traditional amplifiers need cleaning about every two years. They should be opened up and blown out with an air compressor and set the pressure somewhere around 40 or 50 PSI, pounds per square inch, and if it has a filter of any kind, be sure to clean it using the manufacturer's recommendation. If a connection becomes flaky for some reason, spray some contact cleaner into the jack and work a plug back and forth a few times and see if that helps. If not, then it's time to open it up and check for solder connections or bring it to a repair shop. Using a paintbrush, brush off your laptop, controllers, and other electronics that get dusty from use, especially after every outdoor event that you do. Be sure to always carry extra fuses, light bulbs, and batteries for everything that uses them. Mark a small Ziploc bag as to exactly what the item inside is for, and then that way, when you're in a hurry and you need it quickly, you can find it and know exactly what that fuse is for or that light bulb is for, etc. Carry a black Sharpie pin with you to use as a touch-up marker for your speakers and other small scratches on some of your equipment. Be sure to keep a couple of small screwdrivers that will fit the screws that are on your XLR connectors, since not everybody uses the same ones. Sometimes you need a small Phillips, sometimes a small flat blade. So whatever your connectors require, make sure you have those two little miniature screwdrivers. Also, carry a few extra power cables and some backup cables for anything critical in your setup. This is especially important now that we don't have a radio shack to fall back on around every corner. So here's what I want you to do. The next time you're setting up your system, ask yourself for each item that you touch, if this were defective today, how would I recover quickly? So after asking yourself that, you should have a customized list of what's the most important to you for your current setup. But don't forget to update it in the future when you change gear. I'll be right back. Recently, I was involved in a conversation and the topic was about the client expecting the DJ to play an R-rated song at her wedding reception. For me personally, this is a major no-no. It's simply not going to happen. But that's me and my policy. So what's yours? Do you have it in writing anywhere? Perhaps including this in your contract would be a great place to make your stand. Don't misunderstand me. I want you to be you and have your very own policy. I'm not trying to tell you what you can and can't do for your business. But whatever it is, be willing to stand up and protect your company's name and reputation. I know it's their wedding or anniversary or their event or birthday or whatever it is, but it's also something that could hurt your business for a very long time and you need to understand that. This isn't something that you just want to assume is going to work itself out unless you're playing in a club or a bar where an R-rated song might be more tolerated with 21 and older crowds. But let me tell you something. 
if I was sitting in a bar and the DJ started playing R-rated songs, I would personally get up and leave. Would I blame the bar owner? No. I would blame the DJ and so would everyone else in the bar. Again, I'm not trying to tell you what your policies should be. What I'm asking you to do is to think about this and adopt a firm policy about playing R-rated material and stick to it either way, whichever side of the fence you fall on. Clients need to understand that your company's reputation is just as important to you as the success of their event. I know from my experiences that I have been thanked many times for playing clean versions of songs. So the next time this comes up with one of your clients, don't be afraid to stand up for your company, even if it means losing the event. Your future success is counting on it. I'll be right back. I was asked to share some tips about being a master of ceremonies and one of the first things that you need to learn about being an MC is that when you pick up a microphone and say something, you are not automatically being an MC at an event. There are many names to describe the different roles and many well-known DJs offer courses that will teach you how to be a better presenter, announcer, or master of ceremonies. Each one has their own unique role and duties. Take, for example, if someone is hosting a TV show on TV, it could be said that they are acting as a master of ceremonies, but since there are no, quote, ceremonies, end quote, taking place, many seasoned professionals would say, no, they're merely acting as a host. If I said to an audience, please welcome Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I just made an announcement. I didn't, I'm not an MC. So when one is discussing the roles at different events, we need to understand the duties and responsibilities of that role so that we can properly classify it. If we forget titles for a minute and all these names, I can share some things that are pretty common to all of them. You should read out loud often and really enunciate your words. You may not realize that you are skipping words when you read, but most of us do this without realizing it. Reading out loud and backwards from the bottom up will help you to stop doing that. So start at the bottom of a paragraph and work your way up one word at a time out loud. Before each of your events, you should do some type of warm up with your voice for the vocal exercises. You should do a few deep breathing exercises to expand your lung capabilities. Stand up straight and take deep breaths before you speak. Don't use a phony radio voice, ladies and gentlemen. Just be yourself and be natural. You should sound exactly the same both on and off your microphone. The most important thing you can say will be the very first time that you turn on your microphone to speak at an event. Make sure it is well thought out, brief, and to the point. Because if the audience thinks that you're wasting their time with unimportant stuff and you're just rambling on, you're going to struggle the entire event to get their attention every time you turn on your microphone. Speak clearly when you do turn on your mic and make whatever you're going to say count. Too many times DJs like to hear themselves talk and that's never good for audience members. So that's going to be my show for today. I want to thank everybody in the group for offering their, their uh, suggestions because that's what we covered today, all suggestions. So we'll be back next week with all new topics to help you and your business. Be sure to share the show with your friends. Give me your thoughts down in the comments section down below. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up if we've taught you anything new at all. So until next Sunday, be safe and thanks for watching.